Last week, uh, we spoke about Pashas Bereshis, and um, Baruch Hashem, several thousand people uh, saw the session, and that's extremely gratifying. And um, first of all, I would like to thank Benjamin Sofer, who is really, you know, I can't do this. I mean, it's all his work. And, you know, I'm a bit of a Luddite, but, uh, you know, it comes to these kind of things, you know, it's uh, it's beyond me. But um, this week on Sunday, I went uh, to visit Rav Feivel Kohn, together with Rav Bianca Droman, who's Rosh Shiv of Beis Yosef in Brooklyn. And um, um, Rav Feivel Kohn was one of my rabbeim in Chaim Berlin during my teenage years. And uh, Rav Bianca Droman was also a Talmud of his, and Shiva of Eastern Parkway. So we went to visit him. He lives in Lakewood now, Pine River Village. And uh, he's, uh, he can't get out so much, so we went to visit him. So we talked mostly in Torah, but we also talked about G'dayli Yisrael. What are G'dayli Yisrael? And he told us that his definition of a G'dayli Yisrael is a person who works for Habatzas HaToyra without looking to get anything in return. So by that definition, Benjamin Sofer, who is doing this purely for, for, for Habatzas Torah is a God of Israel. I can't say that the same definition would apply to me because um, I probably have personal benefit from it, but Binyamin Sofer is certainly a God of Israel. So last week we spoke about Bria Soilam and uh, Ikri Amuna, and um, I wanted to just point out that it's not my purpose here to use the Pasha as a springboard to uh, give speeches on different topics or lectures. It's not my purpose. My purpose is to learn the Chumash and to learn the Psukim and to explain them according to Pir Shrashi and Chumash, Pir Shrashi and Ovis, and according to the Rambam in, this, in the Mare Levuchim and in uh, Mishnah Torah and in his Pirish on Pirkei Ovis. Sometimes uh, the topics will be broader and sometimes, you know, I would uh, want to even get into uh, issues of grammar and digdok. Not at not at great length, as I understand, most people don't have too much patience for that. But uh, whatever the pasuk requires to understand what it's saying. Before we go to Pasha's Noyach, I would just like to um, say a few more things about Bereshis, because there are a couple of omissions that I made, and I'd like to add one more thing. Um, we spoke about the idea that that the Rabban Shalom is the infinite, and we raised the question of uh, how can this world exist if he's the infinite? Why doesn't the existence of the world infringe on his infinity? And uh, the, Kabbal- uh, the Mokobolim say that there was Tzimtzum. Tzimtzum means that the Ban Shalom contracted himself, so to speak, and then there was place for the world to exist. But this is a little bit difficult to understand because if he contracted himself, then he is no longer infinite. So we presented the idea um, that that the world really exists in the mind of the Rabban Shalom. As soon as the Ban Shalom conceived the world, it was already in existence. Baruch Shalom Avayalom, as soon as he had the thought to world existed, and the, t- the world does not have any existence independent of the Rabbani Shloilam, and the Rambam says that if a person could imagine that for a moment that the Rabbani Shloilam would chas v'sholom, cease to exist, the world would automatically cease to exist. If the world ceased to exist, the Rabbani Shloilam would still be there. And I spoke about this at some length. I did not bring this back to explain um, the problem of Tzimtzum. So what I would like to suggest is since the world exists in the Rabban Shalom's mind, that even if there's a Tzimtzum in the world, in the Rabban Shalom's mind, it does not infringe on the affinity of his own existence. 
That means that the Rabbanishlam is infinite, there's no bounds to it, but in his mind he created a world in which he's not necessarily present in the way that he's, that he's present otherwise. Um, I also want, you know, there's another point that, you know, the shame Yudke Vavke. So when we say Yudke Vavke, we refer to it as the shame Havaya, which is the same letters rearranged. Instead of Yud and a He and a Vav and a He, we have He and a Vav and Yud and a He. So one purpose of this is because we don't want to say the Shem. We can't say the Shem. However, I think there's more to that because Havaya means existence. And the only existence is the existence of Hashem. Hashem is existence. There is no other existence without Hashem. So the Shem Havaya really reflects the existence of Hashem. Another point which I didn't really, just no mission, I, I asked the Rashi, the Rashi says that Mitchila Olam Achshava Livers Olam Midas Midas Adin. Hashem wanted to create the world with Midas Adin, but he saw that it would not have a kiyum, so he higged him Midas Arachmem who should tofa the Midas Adin. So the automatic question is, Hashem had an idea, he had a thought, and then he thought it over, and he realized that it won't work. So I mean, what does this mean, Hashem? So I explained that the difference between Midas Adin and Midas Arachman is that Midas Adin is perfect cause and effect. Midas Arachman means that there is, there is wiggle room. It's not perfect cause and effect. So Hashem brought forward Midas Arachman, which was meant to be used with his conduct with people, and he combined that with Midas Adin to introduce into the world a certain element of uncertainty. And therefore, he can manipulate Otherwise, you know, if everything is cause and effect, if a person, uh, you know, got cancer and uh, maybe would have to die, cause cause and effect, perfect cause and effect. But he brought forward me this Ratman to say that there can be spontaneous emissions, there is a certain randomness, and therefore it's possible for people to survive with Rachman. But what does all of Machshava mean? He thought. So Allah Machshava doesn't mean that he had first the thought of Midas Adin and then he changed his mind to combine with Rachman. Allah Machshava means when the Rabban Shalom decided to create a world, by definition, it has to be Midas Adin. It has to be perfectly engineered. As you know, Chazoka, Chavrein, Tachas Yodle, Tam Chacham always gives you whatever he does is, is, is complete and it works. So the Rabban Shalom creates a world then that world has to be Midas Adin. It has to work. It has to be well engineered. However, the Rabban Shalom understood from the beginning, he understood, the other Machshava means that the very thought of creating a world means it has to be Midas Adin. The, the physical world, it has to be perfect cause and effect. That is perfect engineering. But the Rabban Shalom understood that that we, there would be a problem with Rachman. How could a person get uh, sick and daven and Hashem will be uh, give him a cure if that violates the perfect Midas Adin? So he had to combine Midas Rachman to introduce a certain element of uncertainty where he's able to manipulate the, you know, the, the processes of the world. Okay, I forgot last week to bring it back to explain what Allah Machshava means. There's one more point I would like to make. About Bereshis, it says, "V'ruach alakim rachefes al pnei amoyim." So Rashi says, "The kisei akovet merachev al pnei amoyim." What does this mean? That the kisei akovet was on 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 the water. What does that mean? So I'd like to explain this. The tour says, brings a medrash in our Chaim Tufkov Bayalif. He says that the Goyim, look how different Kali Yisrael is from the Goyim. The Goyim, they come out of uh, court and they don't know what the verdict is going to be. And they're sad and anxious and they're worried. They wear black clothing. But the Yidin, when we call Yisrael, Einon Kain, we're not like that. Leif Shem Levonim, we wear white clothing. Apparently they used to wear white clothing in those days, um, more than today. Today it was mostly black. 
but they come out wearing black, white clothing and they're happy Rosh Hashanah. Lefi sheyoidim sheakodesh baruch hu yaseh lohem nes. They know that the Rabban Shalom will do for them a miracle. What does that mean? What does that mean? A miracle? I mean, if you daven to Rabban Shalom and you do tshuva and you have rachme, you have rachmem. Rachmem is a miracle. Rachmem is not a miracle. It's one of the midas of the Rabban Shalom. He's a rachm. It's not a miracle. So, there's a Gemara in Rosh Hashanah that says that the Rabban Shalom mata, what's the Rosh Hashanah there? Mata klapi chesed. He tips the scales. We have our avainas, we have our, our mitzvahs and our averis, and he tips the scales in our favor. He puts his hand on the scale. So, there's a machlaikis in the Gemara. Noisei yoikoyvesh. Does he lift it? That means he lifts up the, the sins, which automatically makes the, the mitzvahs go down and become heavier and tip the scales in our favor. Or, koyvesh, he presses, he, he presses down on the mitzvahs, so that makes it tipped in our favor. That's what Rashi, that's what Rashi says in, in Rosh Hashanah. The same Gemara appears in Erchen, and of Ches, and Rashi says that koyvesh means, what's the solution of Rashi? He takes our virus and puts them into like little tunnels under the Kisya Kovid. Puts them into in little tunnels. What does this mean? What does this mean? So, so I'd like to first explain the Rashi and then I'll explain that Gemara. Um, the Rambam says that the Rabbani Shloilam does not interact directly with the world. He's too high, like the Lashon of the al and Kehels is Achor. The Rabbani Shloilam does not interact directly with the world. He interacts through Malachim. And what are Malachim? I mean, there are some Malachim that we know, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, we know these malachim, but the Rambam says that all chukei ateva, all the laws of nature are malachim. They do the Rabban Shalom's will, and by that they are called malachim. That there's gravity. Gravity is a malach. It, it fulfills the will of the Rabban Shalom that heavy things should fall down to earth, so it's a malach. So all the forces of nature, everything is a malach. That a seed grows into a tree, that's a malach. All these things are malachim. Now, Rashi says that Yom Echad, why is called Echad? He was the only one in the world because the malachim were created on the second day. On the first day, there were no malachim. He didn't create the malachim yet. That means that the processes of nature began on the second day. On the first day, there was no nature. The, the, on the second day, when he created malachim, then the forces of nature were activated and they participated in the development of the world. But on the first day, there was no nature. So how did, how did, uh, how did the Rabbani Shalom create the world? And how did he do everything on the first day? How did he do, um, no, Krish Shemayi Barat, since, uh, how did he, made, made via oil, he made light, how did he do this? So the answer is that he created something which is higher than a malach. And the Gemara says in Psachim, seven things were created before the world in preparation for creation, and one of them was the Kisei covet. The Ba'an Shalom, Kisei covet was not always there. The Kisei covet is a creation. It was created right before the creation of the world. So the Ba'an Shalom created a Kisei covet which is much higher than a malach, well above the malachim, it's a kind of a malach, like a, a super malach, and it's, it's as close to the Rabbani Shloilam as it could possibly be. But, that is, but, it's, but it's a malach, so it's a kind of a malach. So on the first day, he, cre- he used the Kisya Kovid that he created before the creation of the world, and with the Kisya Kovid, he created the world. So the Kisya Kovid is higher than, than Malachim. It's higher than Teva. The Malachim were created on the second, second day. On the second day. Right. But the first day, whatever was done on the first day, how was it done? So Rashi tells us. He says it was Malachim created on the second day. So immediately the question, if you know, 
according to what the Rambam says, I'm sure Rashi would agree that uh, that the Baruch Hashem acts through Malachim. So what happened on the first day? So Rashi tells us that the Kisya Kovid was Merachim for Pleamayim. Whatever was happening was being done through the Kisya Kovid. We find that the Gemara says that when Moshe Rabbeinu came up to Shemayim, um, the Malachim said, what is a human being doing over here in Shemayim? So, so they wanted to kill him. Moshe was afraid they were going to kill him. So Rabbi Hashem told them, Echoiz b'kisei ha-kovid. Grab onto the kisei ha-kovid. When you grab onto the kisei ha-kovid, then there is a teva. We know there's a teva, there's nature. There's a teva and oilum atachtoin, all the forces of nature that we know. There's also a teva and oilum elyain. There is a bezin shalmalo, there are rules, there are, you know, when, when, what kind of tshuva is accepted, what kind of tshuva is not accepted. There are rules, there is a teva elyain. There are rules, what's in the shemayim. So, so, the Rabban Shem told him that you know, the, apparently the Malachim had the power to kill him. Otherwise, what was he worried about? Ben Shem told him, should have told him, don't worry about them. They can't do anything. No, they could. Why? Because he was violating the Teva Elia. And he didn't, a, a, a human being, a Yuludisha, a person born of a woman, did not belong in the Elam Elia. And so it was a violation. And they could have killed him. So ben Shem told him, no. Grab onto the Kisya Kovid, and if you're onto, holding onto the Kisya Kovid, then, then you're Lamala Bateva Tachta, you're Mala Bateva Elyon, you are not subject to Teva. We find the same thing that Menashe, the king, the, the king of Yehuda, who was a terrible, terrible king, and uh, not going to get into Menashe, and, and he wanted to do tshuva after, after like many, many years of, 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 of uh, subverting Klal Yisrael. And and his, his tshuva was not accepted because he was a chayta machdi yisarabim. If you sin yourself and you cause others to sin, then your tshuva is not accepted. So so the bezin shamala did not accept his tshuva. It was not uh, by the rules of the teva elia. It was not acceptable. So Baruch so the chadal say chater loy chatira tachas kisya kovet. He made a tunnel under the kisya kovet. I don't know. With tunnels, but it's whatever it means. But he brought him through the Kisya Kovid, and when he brings him to the Kisya Kovid, then then the rules don't apply. And even Chuva, uh, like Menashe's Chuva, which is really not acceptable, but if he brought it to the Kisya Kovid, then it could be accepted. Because Lamala from the Teva. The same thing we find. So that's 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 what it's that's what Rashi means. That is Koivish, the Averis Tachs Kisya Kovid. He puts them on the various under Kisya Kovid. That does not mean that he's Michael them. He's not Michael them. But he takes them and he puts them into Kisya Kovid and he and he keeps them there. And therefore, whatever din was supposed to be a judgment was supposed to be passed on them is not because everything is in suspension. And this is in violation of the Teva Elyo, Teva Elyo by Din. But but if you go to the Kisya Kovid, the Banshan puts that on the Kisya Kovid, then he can give you Rachmim and let you go for another year. That's what that Gemara means. So what the measures that the tour brings is saying, we're Bituchim Shiaslanun Nes. We we know that the Rubban Shlom, when it really comes to it, he will make a nest for us. What is a nest? He will be kovish our various tachas kisya kovid. He will put our various in the kisya kovid, and that is a mess. It's a miracle. Why? Because it overrides the teva elyon. So it is a mess. Now let's turn to Pashas Noyach. So we know that Noyach, Noyach was the one who gave uh, muster to the people of. In, in, in the Dora of Dora Mabel, they were terrible. They were they were the Arayas and tremendous amount of Avoid Zora and Gezel, they were they were thievery and even though there was like Nigmar Dinam El Ala Hamas, that the the final straw was the thievery, but really what they what they would what they did for what they were punished was Arayas and Avoid Zora. And Nayach he gave them Musr about that. They didn't listen. And he was the one that would save. But ironically, ironically, 
Noyach was the one that caused the marble. He caused the marble. Why? Because when Noyach was born, it says, Zei nachmenu memaseinu, why, why did Lamech call him Noyach? What does the word Noyach mean? Zei nachmenu maseinu, mitzvan yadeinu, min adom ha-sheirara. The Ben Shloylem, when Adam Arishain um, ate from the Eitz Adas, so the Ben Shloylem said, and because of you, I am cursing the earth. And there are going to be thorns and thistles, and you want to get some food, you're going to have to struggle, and it's going to be very hard. And now, when when Noach was born, so Lemach said that, ah, oh, he will give us comfort and relief from the troubles that we have, the struggles that we have, dealing with this cursed earth. Um, how did he know? How did he know he was a baby? So either it was a tefillah, some of the Farshim say, or it was a nevua, or and the the, the um, Sifz Rechamim brings a medrash that Noach was Noelad Mal. He was born with a bris. And when when um, Hashem cursed the earth, so other asked him, Ad Masai, how long is the earth going to be cursed? So he said, until somebody is born with a bris. When that's going to happen, it's over. So when Noach was born and he had a bris, and they knew Kabbalah from Adam that, that the curse will come to an end then, they understood that this is our, he's bringing us comfort and relief. Now, in Kohelis, so the land didn't produce any grains. It did, but it was a struggle. You know, you had to, you know, just to get anything, you probably got your hands stuck with thorns. I don't know what thistles are, but uh, you know, probably also not a pleasant thing. Kites the and and um, you know they could produce, but it was it was very very difficult. And now when Noach came, Grash says he invented um, he invented uh, plowing. Uh, um, you know, plow, plow, uh, you know, all kinds of agricultural tools, and the, the and the thorns and thistles went away. So now it was much easier. You just plowed and it grew and you ate. So in Kahelis, Kahelis is talking about the, the 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 irrationality of a person chasing after material wealth. He says. You're gonna you're gonna run into material wealth. You're gonna build up a big estate, and you think it's gonna last. This will be your your lasting achievement on the world. Of course, you know you're gonna be dead, and uh, you know it's gonna be in Shemayim. We're not talking about that. But what are you doing? You're running after you're building up an estate. You know a lot of money, a lot of investments. What are you doing? You're gonna die. The person that comes after you may not be as industrious as you may not be as responsible, your heirs, then they may just squander all of it and it will all be gone. And then he says another thing. He says, you may not even be doing them a favor because if you give them so much unearned wealth, who knows what's going to happen to them. They're going to become decadent, they're going to become, I don't know, drug addicts. I don't, it's, how are you doing them a favor? And Rashi brings that, he, that when the Ben Shalom gave the people a life of ease when Noach was born, that led to the Mabel. That led to the Mabel. Rashi in the second paragraph of Kahelas, I don't remember which Pasik to find it. So that 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 led to the Mabel because the people as long as people were busy struggling with the earth and you know and finally get some food, all right, fine. But now they have a life of leisure. They could just very easily grow crops and eat and uh, you know and, and and then what do you do? So he went to Avoid Zora. So actually the the proliferation of Avoid Zora was really a result of the birth of Noyach, which gave them relief from the curse of the Adama. Okay, that's what it was. Not his fault. Um but what why I don't talk about the idea of Avoid Zora. Why was there such a big proliferation? What happened? So, so the Rambam says like this, Bimei Enosh, in the times of Enosh, who was a, a grandson of, of Adam, Tob Adam Toiz Godel. The people at that time, they knew that there's a God, 
they knew that, uh, and they 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 thought that the stars do his bidding, just like Malachim, the stars do his bidding. They thought maybe the stars have 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 intelligence, but uh, certainly it could be that the stars somehow with cosmic rays have some effect on the earth. Maybe I don't know, but they the Tob Neodim Tars Godel, they made a mistake, and they thought Vezeur Ritzayin Akel Baruchu. A king wants that his ministers should be respected and honored. In the same way, the Ben Shalom wanted that people should worship and honor his ministers, which are the stars and uh, whatever else that they should. And that's the Zeu Kvadesh al and they did all this they wanted to fulfill the will of Hashem according to their misguided thoughts. That's what they wanted. However, that was it. But then what happened? I mean, I guess, I guess they found it easier to, to uh, worship a star than to worship God, because God is the infinite, the unknowable, and it's you know not so not relatable, so you know it's it's a little bit difficult to to serve God that you don't know anything about Him. So maybe He wanted you to serve Him by serving His His ministers. So that's what they wanted to do. After a while, they had to be a sheker, and they told them to put up idols. And to all these different kind of things, and and listen to this. The kivush archa yomem, after the the you know, the length of time, nishtaka Hashem hanichbad vanoira mikol hayikum midaitam v'lo hikiru. That the Hashem hanichbad vanoira was nishtaka. What does that mean? In the beginning, he calls him a kale, kale barchu. He calls him, he calls him kale. Over here he says, Nishtakach Hashem anichbad v'anoira. What exactly does that mean? Until, Ad shenoira demude shal oilam v'hu avram avinu. So what is the meaning of Nishtakach Hashem anichbad v'anoira? So the Rambam of the Meir says that I think I've mentioned it before, it's impossible for us to have any kind of knowledge of, of God. When we say that um, God is a rachum, that he has mercy, it doesn't mean what it means to us. He, we, it, the, all these things are descriptions of his actions, of what he does. And if he does an action, that if a human being would do it, it would come from an emotion of mercy, then we call it Racham. But God doesn't have emotions. God is the infinite, the perfect. Emotions are a weakness. He doesn't have emotions. So we don't, we, we, everything that we know about him, we know, we know what he does. And we give them names. Elohim means his, his control of the world. Every, every name tells us something that he does. But him himself, we don't know. The only thing we could know about him are negative attributes. We know what he is not. Well, we say that God has wisdom. What does that mean? What do you mean he has wisdom? Is it like our wisdom, just like a higher IQ, a bigger capacity? No. It has no connection to human wisdom. We say God has power. What does that mean? And also, also, everything is one. There are no separate attributes. A person has wisdom and he has strength. These are two different parts of him. His brain has wisdom and his arm has strength. One is not connected to the other. But the Rabbani Shloilam does not have attributes. His achtos, it's yichud, he is one. He has one essence, only one essence. The Ramam calls it one simple essence. It is not a composite, it is not complicated. He has an essence that is unknowable. And everything that he does 
comes from the same essence. His wisdom comes from the same essence as power. He gives an example of how fire can destroy. It could also make something hard. Can, you know, that there, I mean, that's just like a, a muscle just to help you understand a little bit. But, but the same essence can do many different things. And it's all one. And we don't know anything about him. All we know, well, we, we know that, that he gives us an example. Let's say um, you tell a person, no, people don't know what a ship is. So the first person you tell him that the ship is, is um, not solid. Okay? He knows that. The second person comes in, who also was there already, or whatever, another person comes in, and he knows what the first person knows, and he's told that the ship is not a cylinder. And the third person comes in, and he tells him that the ship is not a cone. So now the first person knows one piece of information, the second person knows two, the third person knows three. He goes through a list, I don't yeah, you know, but it is three. Which one knows more about the ship? The third person, because he has three pieces of information, and the first person has only one piece of information. However, does the third person have any idea of what a ship is? No. He just knows what it's not. So that's, uh, he says, when it comes to the Rabbanishleilam, we cannot know what he is, we can only know what he is not. We know when he's, we say he has, but his wisdom, we know that he is not ignorant. But the wisdom that he has, no idea what that is. That's what that's what the Rambam says. However, I'd like to give a, a, a hypothetical. Let's say there's a person like I come to, I can, I come here and I tell you I met a person, and I tell you the person's name. The person's name is, I was trying to find a name which wouldn't tell, tell you anything about this person. And the best I can come up with is Lynn. Because Lynn, it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be, I don't know if Haredim ever used the name Lynn, but, but there are plenty of Jews that use the name Lynn. It could be a Westerner, it could be a Chinaman, it could be, I could, they, Lynn doesn't tell you anything about this person. Nothing. But do you know anything about this person? Actually, you do. You know that his or her, we don't know if it's a man or a woman, we know that this person's name is Lynn. So we have something that we know about this person. We know the name is Lynn. When it comes to Rabbani Shlalem, the Rambam says that all the names of the Rabbani Shlalem, all the many names, they all reflect his manifestation in the world, the things that he does. The name Yudke Vavke, the tetragrammaton, the four-letter word, that four-letter name, that that um, that can, may not be pronounced, that is the Shema Etzem. That is his name. That is the name of his essence. It is not a reflection of things that he does. So that's all, so. Even though we can't know anything about the Rabbi Nishlelem, we can know what he's like, but we do know his name. We know his name is Yudke Bavke. That we know. When the people, in the time of of the Mabel or before the Mabel, when they they decided that they're going to worship his servants and eventually worship idols. They still knew that there was a Rabbi Nishlaylam. But, you know, they really couldn't connect them. But they knew that there was a Rabbi Nishlaylam. Until it was Nishtakach Hashem Anichbal Vanoira. The name Yud K. Vovke was forgotten. And without knowing even his name, then they lost all connection. They had no connection to him. And then it was total Avay Zara. They forgot that the Rabbi Nishlaylam exists. Everything was into the idols. Until Avram came along. That's what Ramam says, Amud the pillar of the world. Now Avram also didn't know 
the name Yud Kei Vav Kei. It says in the beginning of the era, Shmi Yud Kei Vav Kei, Loi Nodat Yilem, right? The era la Avois, and I didn't tell them the name. I told it to them later, but in the beginning, when Avram was Moisel Nefesh, the Rabbani Shalom, he didn't know the name, but he came to the understanding that the idols are false, and there is an infinite, unknowable God, and he knows nothing about him, not even his name, and still he was ready to to, to give his life for the Rabbani Shalom. That was Avram. But the other people that were that that had turned away and ended up serving serving uh, the servants and the idols, when they forgot the Shem Anich Bolvan when they forgot the Shem Yudke Bavke, then they had no connection whatever to Rabban Shalom, he was completely forgotten. That's what the Rambam is saying. So this is what happened to Dara Mabel. The Dara Mabel, the people forgot the Shem Anich Bolvan and it was completely forgotten. Now, the... Um, The Mishnah Brura, let me see one second, here, ah. The Mishnah Brura, right at the beginning, Simon Aleph, Zivkot and Aleph, says that a person should always think that he is in front, he's Aymed Lefnei Hashem Yisparach. He's standing in front of God. A person should always be aware of God and to know that he's standing in front of him. And then he brings this. The cause for B'Shem Arizal, the Arizal said, She'itzayr Shem Avaya Tomet Kenegit Einof, he should have the shame Yud K Vov K in front of his eyes. Bizet Soit Shivisi Hashem Negdi Summit. Shivisi Hashem Negdi Summit, he says, doesn't just mean that that uh, that the Rabbanu Shalom is in front of me. It means that the Shem Yud K Vov K is in front of me. Bizet Hoy Elis Godel in Yayira. That will help you for Yira because it will help you relate to the Rabbanu Shalom in a direct way. This is, the, we know the Rabban Shalom's name, you should always keep the, his name, that keeps him in front of you more than just knowing the things that he does in this world. Shem Yudke Vavke. There's an old menig, and people write Svarim, that they start this, the Hagdama with four, four words that are, the first, first letters are Yudke Vavke. Yisborech, Yoytzer, Yisala, Boyre, whatever they pick, but it's Yud K Vav K. Um, recently, in recent years, Svarim don't necessarily start that way. They start with Oydel Hashem Bchalevav. I thank Him. It's wonderful, Hashem Bchalevav. But they don't, they don't use that many. With my Svarim, I always do that because the Shem Yud K Vav K. I want to be, you put in the Shem Yudke, Vavke, in the beginning of a Sefer, to say, because that is directly the Shem Etzem. So you put in Yudke, Vavke. And this led to, led to Avodah Zara, because the Shem Yudke, Vavke was forgotten, and the Dara Mabo reached a point where they totally forgot the Shem Anichbad Vanoira, and they were totally into Avodah Zoro, had absolutely no connection to Rabban Yishlam, and that brought on the Mabel. So the Pasuk begins, Ela told us Noyach, Tzadik Tom Hoyav the So it says, Noyach was a Tzadik in his generations. So Rashi says, with the Reisav, Yesh Merab Yisaynu Doshu Moshe Lishvach. Even in his you know, decadent, depraved generation, he was able to be a tzaddik. Kolshkein, Elohoyu Bedar Tzaddikim, Oye Tzaddik Yaiser. If he had been in a better environment, with a tzaddikim, he would have been even greater. And then, V'yesh Tavish Mois Lugnai, like it's, it's a derogatory statement. L'fidore Hoye Tzaddik. In his generation, he was a tzaddik. V'yelohoyu Bedar Shal Avram, Loi Haya Nechshav Leklum. He wouldn't have, it would have been nothing. Now, Nayach was, was a Navi, the Ban Shalom talked to him. He was, uh, he was a Tzaddik, you know, but, uh, but he's saying that if he lived in the time of Adam, in the time of Avram, he would have been considered nothing. Why, why would it be nothing? Maybe he would be, uh, you know, why, how could you say he would be nothing? 
So I want to offer one shot, but then I want to offer the second shot, which I think is better. So um, it says, Medrash says, the, the last Pasuk in Beresh says, the Noyach Matzachem Be'enei Hashem, that he found grace in, in, the, in the eyes of Hashem. So the Medrash says, I feel the Noyach Matzachem even though Noyach was survived from the Ramabal, he wasn't deserving of it. He found found favor in God's in, in the Rebbe Shalom's eyes. So, what does this mean exactly? What does this mean that he found? That he found. What, what is chen? What is the idea of chen? So the Gemara says in Soita, Om Rav Yochanan, Sholosh Chinus Chen, Chen Hamokam Al Yoshev. People, the place where people live. It finds favor with them. You may live in a place. Somebody will come and I'll say, "Oh, what kind of place is this? You know, you know the streets and the this and the you know the smog and those." But the people that live there, to them, they see it in a favorable light. Chayn ishal bala, a wife has chayn for a husband. The husband looks at her in a favorable light. Chayn amekach aloy once you buy something, before you buy something, you look at it, you think, check the consumer, not there still consumer reports, but you check the consumer reports and you see what people say about it, you think, and this, and you comparison shop, but once you buy it, it's the greatest. You have, it has favor. So Rashi says, that the, p- the place where a person lives finds favor with them, afilu hura nirlehem toiv, even if it's not good, they see it as good. A woman finds favor in her husband's uh, husband's eyes. Afilo even if she's not so pretty, but nice is kind He finds her. He finds her favor. He finds her pretty. So this is this is what chain means. Chain means that the ability to overlook um, flaws. And to look at only the good and and see it in a favorable light. That's what chayin means. We have in in um, we say in Birchas Koyanim, we say uh, at the end. We say he rotsen, and we say shetitneinu lachen lachesed l'rachmem beinach of kol reinu that everybody should look at us with favor. Kishem shenasata as Yosef tzadikecha. I don't remember the exact words. I thought I wrote it down, but kishem shenasata as Yosef tzadikecha b'shoa shel bishay aviv k'sainus pasim lachen lachesed bechol. So you know what does that mean? He when Yaakov put him on the Ksenis Pasim, I mean that was that, that they, they looked at him terribly, the brothers. So what what he's saying is that once he put him on the Ksenis Pasim, then his fate was sealed. They would uh, you know throw him in the pit and he'd end up in by the Yishma'elim, and he'd end up by the by in Mitzrayim, and he would be in a hostile environment. And if you look at the Psukim later and later Pashis, Everybody, everybody found him wonderful. Everybody thought he was great, and they gave, they gave him good jobs, and they, they 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 treated him extremely well. Why did they treat him extremely well? Because, as we say, because at that moment when he was exposed to danger, when he put on the signs past him, Hashem gave him a bracha of chen, that wherever he would go, he would be seen favorably. So, in the same, so then, according to this message, is matzah chen. That Noyach had chayin. That means Noyach maybe had uh, had chesroinus, which are not specified, and Hashem saw him with chayin because he was the best of the best that there was. So he overlooked, so to speak, whatever his flaws were, and he saw him as as uh, a very favorable light. So maybe what Rashi is saying, maybe, is that. At that time, it was necessary to view him with Chayn because he was well above everybody else around him. But if he had lived in the time of Avram, 
then then maybe the Rabbanu Shalom would not have overlooked all his flaws and all his um, problems, and then he would be n- nothing compared to what he was now. Now we view him as a tzaddik, Tom the Reisov. He's a tzaddik. I does this, and then okay, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna look at those. That's the chayin. Okay, so this is one pshat and Rashi, but I I still think that that's not. Um, I don't think that's the pshat and Rashi. Did Yosef wear the Ksenis Pasim throughout his journey? I don't know if he did it, but it was just. No, he didn't. The Ksenis Pasim was dipped in blood. Blood, right? But but but, to, from the moment that he gave him the Ksenis Pasim and he triggered the jealousy of the brothers, that's when he was in danger. And then, who knows what would happen to him, where he would go, and and you'd be at the mercy of many people. So Hashem gave him a brach of chayin. Whoever he encountered would look at him as a wonderful person. That's the brach of chayin. Is this what Rashi means? Perhaps. But I want to bring something else. It says in Pasha Shmini that but not of Aviyu, not of Aviyu were the sons of Aaron. They were the heirs apparent to the leadership of Kali Yisrael. So the Sifra says, They saw that Moshe and Aaron were walking. This, this I want to conclude with this. That they saw, oh no, I have something else to say, never mind. <laughs> That so they saw Moshe and Aaron walking ahead of them, and they were walking behind them. So they so not of said that view. Each nays the kingdom alalu mesim the onu nina gesakol. Soon these two old people are going to die, and we will be the leaders of Kali Yisrael. Amar Kadosh Baruch Hu, mi koveres me. We will see who buries whom, and uh, and they died. I mean, none of Aviyu were, were tremendously great people. And, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, when they died, he said, apparently they're greater than us. I mean, why would they say something like this? Why would they say that we're waiting for them to die? I mean, what? So, I want to, there's a Gemara in Megillah. The Gemara says that Rebbe came to visit Rabbi Shua ben Karcha. Rabbi Shua ben Karcha was very, very, very old. I'm not sure how old, but really old. And he asked him, How did you live so long? So he told them a number of things. He never looked at, it's enough in Megillah. He never looked at a Russia's face. I mean, he told a number of things that he said. Okay. He said, what do you want to know? You know, don't you, does it bother you that I'm living so long? So he said, no, it's Torah. I want to learn it. In other words, what's happening at Shuvah Mekorcha is Torah. I want to learn it. So he told them, Bishaspatirosay, when Rebbe is uh, getting ready to leave, so he told them, Barcheni, give me a bracha. So he said, He rotsen shetagia lechatsa yomai. A bunch of help that you should live half as much as I've lived. So, so Rebbe said, And all of it not? Why you give me such a bracha? You give me, I should only live half as long as you? What's wrong if I live all as long as you? So he said, The ones that come after you should be shepherds and take care of animals. So Rashi explains, It's not good for you to live so long. Your sons are your heirs, and they are going to be your your uh, successors. And if you live very long, the heim call you mayam you adiotes. They'll always be just regular people. So you see over here that that I mean not for all people, but for people that have destinies for greatness. If they have a father in front of them who is greater or is in that position and they cannot get to it, then a person would be stifled. You would not be able, a person has to be able to reach 
the fulfillment of his destiny. And as long as the father stands in the way, then they cannot reach that destiny. That's what Nodav Aviyah was saying. They had their destiny. They were supposed to be the leaders of, of Klal Yisrael. And they felt stifled. Not they, they weren't looking for gaiva. They weren't looking to have covered. They were looking to grow. They were looking to become, you know, as they could not grow into being the people that they were meant to be as long as Moshe Baron was there. Well, if Moshe Baron would, would, would pass away, then they could be reach the, 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 the office of leadership. They could become the leaders. And a person rises, rises to his situation. And then if they would be the leaders, then however great they were now, they would be able to reach much higher levels of greatness. And that's what they were saying, that they felt, they felt that impatient, I guess, that they wanted to reach those levels of greatness. And as, as long as Moshe Aaron were there, they could not, not because they needed people to ask them something, but it's just the nature of how it is that, that if you are in the second position, you cannot be, you cannot be fulfilled. So, so, this Gemara says in the Zara, very similar thing. Let's be grateful to our ancestors. This means the ones that did the Egel. If they hadn't done the Avera, if they had not done the Avera, after Matan Torah, the people who were Makabal Torah were supposed to live forever. They were not going to die. But once they did the Egel, then they, then, then they had to die again. So they, so they said, we have to be grateful to them because they did the Avera, so they're going to die. And if they wouldn't, if they wouldn't die, Anu Kamish Le Bonolam, we would be as as if we didn't come to the world. So Rashi says, Fleshain Chayan Laulam, they live forever. Because Manshain Kayamim, as long as they exist, as long as they're alive, Ain Anu Hashuvim Lakum. We are not considered anything. I guess it's a relative statement, but I mean it could still be big. But we can't. We're not considered what we should be. So I think, and that's the lotion that Rashi says. Which is the exact lotion that Rashi uses now by the Zara. That means that if Noach had lived in the time of Avram, and his destiny was to be a leader, and Avram was there, he would always be in Avram's shadow, and he would never be able to grow into the person that he was meant to be, and that is called Ein Nechshavuklum. Ein Ono Chashuvim Luklum, like Rashi says in the Bible, Ein Lehoya Nechshavuklum. Okay, I want to include one thing. I just want to make a very small thing, then I'll conclude. Um... The Pasuk says that um, after they came out of the Teva, Noir got drunk and and um, and Ham came in and he castrated him. So he said, Ham should be a slave to his brothers. I just want to read you an Ibn Ezra. Viesh Oimrim, some say, Hiakushim, the black people, Hey, Mavodim, why is why are they enslaved? Bavur Shakil el Noach is Cham, because Noach cursed Cham. So this is the curse of Cham. That's why black people are enslaved. I guess in his time he didn't meet many uh, free black people, but he says why is it when people say that this is the curse of Cham? That's why they're slaves. Vehine Shachu they forgot. Kimelech Arisha Nachar Amabel Hayomikosh. The first king in the, after the Mabel was Nimrod. Nimrod was from Kush, from Cham, and from Kush. So you cannot say that the individual blacks have to be slaves. What does the Pasuk mean, Eved Avodim, you Le'echav? He doesn't say, that's all he says. I think the Pasuk is, is more in a global sense that, that the white race dominates the black race, that we see. That is just geopolitics. That's how it works, and maybe that the, the, the imperialism of the white race, maybe that is from the from the Klola of Noyach. But individual blacks to be enslaved, 
that that is not justified by the call of Nayak. Okay, now enough of that. So Rashi says like this: Why did Chum castrate the Nayak? Why? So he says, Omer he said to his brothers, Odomarishin Shnei Bonim La he only had two sons. The Horak Zezebishvil Yerushas Oilam. And one killed the other because of uh, the legacy of the world, to have the world. I mean, the, the, the Pasuk really doesn't say that. The Pasuk says that um, he was Makana because of the carbon, but that was symbolic because the carbon. Our father has three sons. He needs a fourth son. What does this mean? You have an empty world. Everybody is gone. Only Nayach and his three sons. And the entire world is open to you. All of Europe and Asia and Africa and uh, every, all the continents, they're all open to you. An enormous world. There are three people and you have a fourth person. Too much, we're going to kill each other. What does it mean? I mean, you know, within a few generations, these three people will have, you know... Uh, thousands and millions and billions of people and uh, you know I mean many of them kill each other of course but you know what, what, what was he saying he was saying is this Cain killed Hevel why did he kill Hevel because there was a conflict in ideology Cain was a material person he was a man of the earth Hevel was a spiritual person he was more you know towards God so there's a conflict of materialism and spiritualism. The Kadmainim, the early people, they established the, 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 the streams of, of ideology in the world. Kayin was, was materialism and Hevel was spiritualism. When Kayin saw that the Rabban Shalom accepted Hevel's carbon, so he said, oh... That means that he's going to be victorious over me and the world will become spiritual, not the ideology that I want to establish. So he killed him. So he said, now you have three sons. Ham, Ham said that Noyach has three sons. They were the new, the new first people. The world was destroyed. They were the ones. And they would establish what goes on in the world. Shem, Ham, and Yafas. Shem, is spirituality, seeking the Rabbeinu Shalom. That's represented by Shane. Cham represents materialism, Avodah Zora. You know, that's what Cham represents. Yafes represents secular humanism, you know, philosophy, learning, you know, that is the Chachma of secular, secular Chachma. So these are three different streams. There is spirituality, there is um, Avodah Zorah, and there is secularism. And these three streams are in conflict. If you look at the world, the world, everything that happens in this world, Kemat, in, on, on, a, on a larger scale, is a result of one of these, the conflict of one or the other of these ideologies against another one. Christianity is comes again, is... Uh, Christianity comes from uh, shame, comes from spirituality, of course. You know, it's not what it should be, but it's the descendant of shame. So the Christians overcame the Greeks and the Romans. We have today in the world, we have like communism and these are secularism, these are secular movements. So all these, all the movements of the world are religious against secular, against paganism. These are the three movements of the world, and they always in conflict, and they always cause slaughter. So he says, are you going to introduce a fourth son who's going to introduce a fourth ideology? The world can barely survive with the conflict of three ideologies. A fourth son would, would introduce another one. What would it be? I don't know. Maybe environmentalism, maybe something else. I don't know. I don't know. He didn't do it, so I don't know. <laughs> but but if there had been a fourth son, there would have been there would have been another ideology. So he said that the world will not survive the conflict of four ideologies.